Hi, in this video we are going to be talking about using the least squares method to find polynomials of best fit. So we're trying to fit a polynomial to data as best we can. And to start out with, we're going to find a polynomial which can exactly actually fit a set of data. In other words, for this first example, we won't be needing least squares. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going to try to find this polynomial p of x, which is going to be at most degree 2 which goes through these three points. So remember this is a degree th uh, this is a dimension 3 space and we have three points for it to satisfy. That's three equations and three unknowns being the three variables a, b and c the coefficients of the quadratic. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our set of points here that we have. We have x1 y1, x2 y2 and x3 y3. And we're just going to plug them in until we get three equations of this format. axi squared plus bxi plus c is equal to yi. Okay, so for this first point we have 0, 3. And that's going to give us a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. And I'm just going to write a 1 here just to have all the coefficients written down. And then we're going to set that equal to 3. We're going to do the same thing here for our second point and then again for our third point. Okay, And now we can take this and rewrite it in matrix format where we're taking the matrix and multiplying by ABC. So we have this vector ABC and here we have the coefficients of A, the coefficients of B, and the coefficients of C in the first, second, and third equations. Just to note the format here, we're always going to have this be the first x value squared this be the first x value to the first power, and this is going to be the first x value to the zero power. But we have to follow this strange convention where if it's a zero, then we're still going to put a one here, even though zero to the zero is not technically one. Uh, but for any other x value, one to the zero or two to the zero, giving us these two ones, it makes perfect sense. We don't have to apply a convention. So we have x i to the 0 in this column, xi in this column, and xi squared in this column. Okay, And we have equations 1, 2, and 3 corresponding to these right here. So we can take this equation and we can write it as an augmented matrix where we're trying to solve for a, b, and c. And so I'm just going to take this augmented with the the right hand side of the equation and we get this right here. We can then take that in row reduce to get this and that tells us our coefficients are 2, negative 5, and 3. So we have this quadratic polynomial that fits these three points exactly and here's a picture of that. So now I want to change this problem slightly. I want to say what happens if instead of only allowing us to have up to x squared terms, what if we were allowed to also have an x cubed term? So in other words, what happens if our polynomial is in the set of polynomials of degree at most 3 instead of degree at most 2? Well hopefully this will still be a solution because this has degree at most 3 and we might find some others. So we can set up this exact same scenario. Uh, instead of plugging all this stuff in, I'm just going to go straight to the matrix format. Um, so we're still going to have this 3, 0, 1 as our y values. We still have the exact same three points that we're using. So these are just the y1, y2, y3 as before. Uh, these are our x, i values raised to powers. So this is x, i to the 0, x, i to the 1, x, i to the 2, and now we have an x, i cubed column. So that is the exact same matrix we had before. And now we just have an extra column on the left corresponding to our cubic term. Okay, So 0 cubed, 1 cubed, and 2 cubed corresponding to our three xi values. Okay, So we can then row reduce this and get something very similar except now we have four columns in our matrix and only three equations. So four variables, three equations. We're going to have a free variable. And so the way I've presented this here, uh, our free variable is going to be the third entry, which is just going to be the coefficient of the x. 
So I'm going to note that the constant term still has to be 3. Okay? And we know that just because the, the point that we're trying to go through is 0, 3, or one of the points we're trying to go through is 0, 3. So that's going to restrict our constant term to 3 no matter what. But uh, here, if we let this variable be free, I'm going to call it s. Uh, so we have s times x. And then we can write these first two coefficients in terms of s just by moving this over to the other side. So the quadratic coefficient, the coefficient of the x squared, is going to be negative 3 halves times s and then minus 11 halves. And similarly for this one, we move the 1 half to the other side, we get this coefficient is 1 half times this coefficient plus 5 halves. Okay, so that's that there. Another way we could have done this, so I've written it here uh, as just a reparameterization of this. Instead of using s, I want to use this variable t. And t is equal to 2 times the quantity s minus 5. That's not so important. What I really want to focus on is this is just another way of thinking about how to come up with this without having to do the matrix in the first place. So we can take our original solution that we had for the first way that we did this, and this was unique. And then we can say, well, now if we're allowed to add in some cubic terms, or up to degree 3 polynomials, then one way to not change what we're getting out in, the, in terms of what's happening at x1, x2, and x3, is we can add some multiple of this nice polynomial, which doesn't have, uh, or which has zero value at those three individual points. So this polynomial, x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, well, when you plug in 0, 1, or 2 into it, into just this part right here, you're always going to get 0. And so we took something where it already satisfied that the y values were correct, and now we're adding on something that won't change the y values at those three points because it's always going to be adding 0 for those specific x values. So here we can see the quadratic that we found originally, as well as a cubic corresponding to the value s equals negative 25. So now I'm going to vary the value of s, and we'll see how that changes the cubic function graphed in blue. Okay, notice that right in the middle there, when s was negative 5, it lines up perfectly with the quadratic. And if you plug s equals negative 5 in to our equation, you'll see that the cubic term cancels out completely. And so we should have a quadratic and it is the same quadratic that we had originally. Instead, we could be thinking about this t value varying, and when the t value varies, the exact same thing happens. So here, the t value, instead of ranging between negative 25 and positive 15 like the s was, the t value is just going between negative 10 and positive 10, and it goes through the exact same set of graphs and right in the middle at t equals 0, uh, we get the actual quadratic. Now let's look at an example where we need to use least squares approximation to solve. So we're going to be trying to find a quadratic again, and instead of only having three points, we now have a fourth point here. Okay, So we're going to go through the same general process for the setup. We still have our p of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And now when we're creating this matrix times ABC equaling our Y values, we're just going to have a fourth uh, row down here as, long, as well as a fourth entry in our Y value column. So this fourth entry here is going to correspond to the X values raised to powers. So this 9 is, X, or is the X value 3 squared, and then 3 to the 1, and then 3 to the 0. So just like it was before, the top three rows are literally the same, and then we have this new row corresponding to this x value 3 here. And then the y value is also 3 corresponding to that 3 there. Okay, So we're not going to actually get a solution to this, and so we just need to find 
the best approximate solution. So we're finding the best a, b, and c we can so that uh, so this times this is as close to this as possible. Or another way of saying this is we're projecting this vector right here onto the column space of this matrix here. And then finding the a, b, and c, which are the coefficients of this column plus, so a times the first column plus b times the second column plus c times the third column to get to that point, which is the projection of, of this y value vector onto the column space. Okay, so the general process for this uh, should look familiar. So we're going to take the matrix that we had before. So we had that equation, this times this equals this. And we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by this matrix here, which is just the transpose of, of our matrix. Okay, uh, when we do that, we're going to get this nice symmetric matrix here. Uh, numbers are a little bit nasty in this case, um, but I've multiplied them out for you just using a computer. Uh, and similarly, when we multiply this in, we're going to get this. And this happens to be invertible. Oftentimes you'll find this is invertible. There are some sort of slightly sillier cases, but still reasonable to, to see where this matrix won't be invertible, and you'll have to do some kind of, uh, um, you'll have to do some row reduction to solve and you'll get uh, you'll get multiple answers. So let's see, we're gonna have the inverse of this matrix times this vector is this column vector here and those are our A, B, and C. So we can then put those A, B, and C as the coefficients of P of X and that is our least squares solution. So here is a nice picture of what that should look like. And here's the picture I've drawn, which is not quite so nice, uh, but I just wanted to point out some, some distances here. These black points are the points that we're actually trying to approximate. So those are our original points. And then the red points are the corresponding points on the graph. In other words, they have the same x value as the black points, but the y value is the point on the curve instead of the point that we're trying to make it be. And we have a difference there which is the, um, the difference in the y values for each of those x values. Okay, These distances here, so I'll call them z1, z2, z3, and z4. Our solution is the best in the sense that it is minimizing this value, which is the sum of the squares of the zi's. So our least squares approximate solution is going to be the solution which has these the sum of the squares here be as low as possible. Any other possible uh, quadratic polynomial is going to have those distances squared and summed together be a bigger quantity than whatever this is. All right, thank you for watching.